Hi everyone, second video. This one we're opening with how to find the area, how to find the shady region enclosed here. But then after that, we're going to go on to the trapezium rule all in the same video. Okay, so let's get this first one down. How do we find the area of the shaded region? What scenario do we have? Do we have scenario one where we've got negative and positive areas under the same curve? Nope. Do we have uh, an obvious shape? that we can manipulate, uh, maybe this is a straight line, maybe this is a triangle, that could use subtraction maybe, uh, quite complicated though. Um, or do we have two curves intersecting? Yes we do, we have two curves, just because this is a straight line doesn't mean it's not a curve, uh, it's just a <laughs> straight curve. So, same theory as before. I've got two curves intersecting, we should be thinking top curve minus bottom curve, all right? Even though there's a large section of area underneath the x-axis. So we can talk about the theory here, can't we? If we think about it, how is this going to work? The top curve is obviously this one. So we'll do it in blue. Here's the top curve. What's our theory? Well, if we're going from, remember we're going from the x-axis, left to right, left to right. So between this point, all the blue area, if we integrated between the two points of intersection, would give me this. My integral would give me that, wouldn't it? So the integral would make this blue section negative, wouldn't it? It would give me a negative area, so to speak. Likewise, this bit would be positive area. So do I need to make this bit modular? You know, should I mod this bit so it flips up here and then takes it as a positive area? No, because I want to take this bit away, don't I? I want to take this bit away here from the area that's going to come from the second line. So let's think about this. Here's my second curve. The area going from left to right up to that point of intersection is all of this, isn't it? If I integrate here, but it's going to be a negative area, isn't it? This is going to be a negative area. But as I'm doing top curve minus bottom curve, minus bottom curve, that negative will become a plus, wouldn't it? Because I go minus and then a negative area, because I'm doing top curve minus bottom curve. So therefore, that area will become positive, which is what I want, because I want it included, but it will have this blue section removed from it, because I would have integrated this top one here first. I really hope that makes sense to you. And if we do this, it's a much easier method than having to split this section up individually, split this section up individually, then split this section up. It takes a long time and it's unnecessary if you understand the theory, you understand what's going on, okay? So just to really reiterate that theory, first top curve is all of this section, isn't it? So if I integrate the top curve, I get this area, the top area, and I get this bit negative, don't I? So I get positive top, negative bottom. And then if I integrate the second one, which is here, this triangle, right? This is all going to be negative, isn't it? Right? But I don't want all of the area. I just want this section of area. So I need to subtract the area here beneath that curve from this bit, don't I? You see? So at the moment, if I took the area as it was, I'd get the positive and I'd get a bit of negative. And if I took this one, right? At the moment, this is a negative area, but I'm going to be subtracting bottom from top. So therefore, this becomes a positive area. So positive 
subtract the negative, bang, got it, got the area that I want. Okay, I'm not sure how I can make it clearer than that, so just stop the video and go through it again. Make sure you rationalize what's going on and ask me in class if you have any questions, okay? So let's do it. First we need to find, we're trying to find the whole of this green area then, aren't we? So we first we need to find, just like always, the points of intersection between the two curves. Top curve minus bottom, so top minus bottom, always the same. Kill two birds with one stone, so minus x squared plus 4 equals x minus 2. Move the bottom towards the top then, so minus x squared minus x plus 6 is 0. That is the curve you're working with when you integrate. But if you don't like minuses in front of your x squared like I don't, then you can times it by minus 1. And again, it's a quick factorize. So we've got x is 2 and x is minus 3. So this is 2 and this bit x is minus 3. Now we're going to integrate then. So the total area, again, if you know your theory, this is absolutely fine. Between 2 and minus 3 of this curve here, isn't it? Because it's top curve, subtract, bottom curve. Square brackets means I've integrated. So minus the third x cubed, minus x squared over 2, plus 6x. Between 2 and minus 3, let's get an aim in there. So I know what I'm aiming for. Go to my calculator. You're doing this as well. To see these silver calculators, they really do uh, pay for themselves. So minus x squared, minus alpha x, plus 6. I should get 1, 2, 5 over 6. And if I continue, so minus a third, 2 cubed, minus, and you do have to show all this in your exam. Plus 6, 2, subtract, minus a third, minus 3 cubed, minus, minus a third squared over 2, plus 6, minus a third. Whack it all in. And third, plus 8, minus, um, where are we, 2, plus 12. So that's 22 over 3, subtract, minus a third, minus 3, all cubed. Probably way quicker if you just use your answer button. I don't know why I'm bothering not doing that. Plus 6, times minus 3. Okay, so minus 163 over 18. I'm trying to hope this works. That doesn't work. Ah. Yeah, just done it again. It's all about that answer button trick uh, in the calculator. I have written minus a third in there when I should put minus 3. Okay, so we get 22 over 3, that's why that aim button is so important, minus 27 over 2, 22 divided by 3, minus answer, and I do get 1, 2, 5 over 6, great. Use the answer button, folks, uh, so much easier, so if you split up that first bit using the answer button in there, using the answer button there, and you get it. Okay, that's that then, that's the last scenario. We're now moving on to the trapezium rule, so the second section of this video. So why do we need it, and where does it come from? Essentially, if I had this curve here, y equals 2 to the power of x, so we know what that looks like. There's an asymptote, remember, uh, y can't be 0, so y is 0. And there's uh, 2 to the power of x, we know when x is 0, it crosses through 1. So there's our curve. It wants us to find the area enclosed by that curve and the lines x equals 2 and x equals 5. So x equals 2, x equals 5. It wants that area. The problem is, 
we don't know how to integrate 2 to the x. You will know when you go into second year, and you'll know that's 2 to the x ln 2. But for now, we have no idea how to integrate that. We cannot plus 1 to the power divide by new power. That only applies with x to the power of n. It doesn't apply to any other function. Um, it, it's, it's very irritating when someone goes, oh, plus 1 divided by... It just makes no sense. You can't... If you try and differentiate that, that doesn't go back to what you started with. It own, that only... And again, it's, do you understand first principles? This is why I teach first principles differentiation. If you do, you understand that only x to the n differentiates when the power comes down minus 1 from the power. Oh, sorry, I integrate. Yeah, so that differentiates an integration exactly uh, those rules that we came up with only applies for x to the n. Now, that being said, we can't find the exact area enclosed by this curve then. We have to approximate it, and that's where the trapezium rule comes in. And essentially, it does what integration does, um, but not with rectangles, but with trapeziums, because that's slightly more accurate. So here's our curve between x equals 2 and x equals 5. The idea is we're going to split that area up into trapeziums, like so. And then we can get a rough idea of what its area is. So first we need to come up with a rule that I can always use depending on how many trapeziums we want, because of course if I want to make this more accurate, I'll half my trapezium size, see? Trapezium there, now there's another trapezium there. You see it's starting to make the area much more accurate if I make the trapezium widths smaller. So how do you make your trapezium rule more accurate? More strips. Okay, let's build the rule then. So in general, how do I generally find the area of a curve or approximate the area of a curve using trapeziums. Well, let's take a few trapeziums then. So let's say this is x naught, And you know y is f of x. So x naught has a y value or f of x value. You can call it whatever you want. f of x naught, doesn't it? But most of us will use, in all your other classes and that, uh, they'll use y naught, okay? So we'll stick with that just in case your mates have a different one. Uh, x2, this will be y2 then. And then as we go on, if we keep doing it, we're going to have the last two trapeziums, aren't we? So if I just kept splitting it up. Okay, here we go. So dot, 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 dot. This one, x3 then, y3. So the last one, the last x value is going to be xn, isn't it? So this would be yn. This would be xn take 1. And this would be yn take 1, right? Etc. So what's the area of a trapezium? And what's the width of the trapeziums? The widths are always evenly distributed, just like integration is. And we call that width h. Okay, so h is trap width. Right. What's the area of this first trapezium? How do you find the area of a trapezium? Well, it's the two power, the average of the two parallel sides added up divided by 2 times by the width. So the area so far is approximately, that's what those wiggly equal signs mean, approximately y0, because remember y is the length, plus y1, all divided by 2, times by h. Plus, and now we've got the second trapezium. You guys can make this yourself if you want to, you know, you can pause the video, you guys make it. Um, plus this times the, the two parallel lengths, y1 plus y2 over 2 times h. Plus next two parallel lengths, y2 plus y3 over 2 times h, you see. Plus dot 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 dot, all the way up to the end. So the last one, the last trapeziums, uh, let's do the one just before, see. The one just before is going to be y n take 2 plus y n take 1 over 2 times h plus, and now our last one 
yn take 1 plus yn over 2 times h. Now, can you see we can put these together? Can you see every single one of these has an h over 2 in it? So I can take a factor out of h over 2. Yeah? So that leaves me with y0 plus y1. That's the first one. Plus y1 plus y2. Second. y2 plus y3. Dot, 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 dot. All the way up to yn take 1 plus yn. Actually, let's do one before that. So plus dot, 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 plus yn take 2 plus yn take 1 plus, and that's that one, this one, yn take 1 plus yn. Okay, and again, can we see how we can simplify this? Y0 comes up once. Yn comes up once. The others, though, come up twice. See? Two lots of, two lots of, two lots of, uh, yn take one, two lots of. So two lots of y1 plus y2 plus dot, 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 plus second before last. That's your trapezium rule, okay? Trapezium rule, done. Finished. That's the trap rule. So essentially, what it's saying is the trap rule is h over 2, first one plus last one, plus two lots of everything else. Yeah, first one plus last one, plus two lots of everything else, all times by h by 2. Let's have an example then uh, to get this going. So estimate the area beneath the curve, y equals x squared plus 3. Don't need to draw it necessarily, but it does help. So there's y equals x squared plus 3, which we could integrate, but I'm just making a point here to see how our accuracy is. So y between x equals 2 and x equals um, 6, and it wants us to use, mm, yeah, we're not going to use 8 strips. That would take a while. Let's use uh, four strips. Okay. So using four strips, <coughs> let's do it. Four strips. So that means we've got four trapeziums, yeah? One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. So we need to know H first. We know our trapezium rule. So we know our trapezium rule is roughly H over 2 first plus last y value plus two lots of everything else. So in your exam, you're going to get a table with x and y's, and you need to know what the x's are, right? So when x is 2, you get a corresponding y value, won't you? 2 squared plus 3, so that's going to be 7. And then we need to know what this width is to split this up. So this width is evenly distributed. How do you find the width? Well, 6 minus 2 divided by 4. So in other words, n. So you can say h is b minus a over n. That's your general formula to find the width of the strip, where b is the last limit, a is the first limit, and n is the number of strips. So 6 take 2 divided by 4, clearly the width is 1. So I know that the area is approximately a half of, and now I need to know my y values. So an x is 2, and it goes up in 1s, because h is 1s, yeah? So 3, 4, 5, and 6. So when x is 3, uh, 3 squared plus 3 is 12. 4 squared plus 3 is 19. 25, that's 28, and that's 39. Cool, and now we can go y0, which is 7, plus the last one, which is 39, plus two lots of everything else. So 12 plus 19 plus 28. Yeah? So the area is approximately equal to... Let's use our calculator. So if you see the trapezium rule, you should be thinking score. This is uh, easy marks. Easy marks. Divide by 2. So it should be 82. That's part A. Part B says, what is the percentage error? So remember, this is an approxima approximation of the curve, isn't it? And the way to make the approximation better would be to make have more strips so it more accurately depict the curve. Uh, and fortunately, we can integrate this. So we can find the exact integral of this. So let's find the exact. 
and then we can start recognizing what the difference is. So the exact is going to be the area uh, between 6 and 2 of x squared plus 3 dx. Big square brackets then, so a third 3x between 6 and 2. Whack that in, uh, and you'll get, and we'll do our calculator check as well. So 6 and 2, uh, a third. Uh, sorry, not a third. We're doing alpha squared plus 3. I should get 244 four over 3. So you guys finish that off, which is approximate, which is 81.3 or 81.3 recurring. Okay, so my approximation looks quite close, but as a percentage, what is it? How do you work out the percentage error? Well, the percentage error is always exact minus your estimate over your exact times by 100, okay? Because obviously if your estimate matches your exact, i.e. you are exactly correct, then your percentage error will be zero. So the exact we know is that one, so we'll use that as answer. Take away my estimate, so 81.3 recurring, subtract 82 over 81.3 recurring. And as it's a percentage error, we're going to have to mod it, aren't we? A minus percentage doesn't really make any sense. So if we have answer take 82 divided by answer, we get 0 0.0008 um, all times by the 100, remember. So times 100, so we get 0.82% for 2dp because that was modded, remember. Okay, that's it. Trapezium rule, done.